towards the bottom of the nest will impact the sexual outcome of those, those turtles. That's a nesting protection structure. Pretty simple two by four construction with some hardware cloth. These were built by um, high school students at Curtis Secondary. Next slide. Gives you an idea of scale. They're about two feet square. And, and try and think about it. So when those eggs hatch 16 weeks, September, um, a lot of people are concerned that we're putting that nesting structure on and leaving it there. And how will the turtles get out? Our experience is they will tunnel out beyond that. So whether they have a sense that that structure is protecting their nest, or there's a particular angle that turtles will excavate a, a tunnel to, to uh, leave the nest, not sure. Um, in some cases, we do remove the structure after nesting because we're really once the scent of the female has dissipated, there's not going to be a lot of um, attraction for predators. Sometimes for us, it's a matter of knowing where that nest is, so leaving the structure on is a good way to remember the site and we've used flags and things as well to, to mark those and we serve we put them in with GPS units and that. How is that secured? So I think the next slide, go to that one. I know having two screens you guys. <laughs> um, so we typically put bricks on and that's enough to deter the, the, uh, the predators. Not so much the humans because sometimes people will pick them up and toss them. Um, they don't understand what they are. We do try and put information on the actual structure and have our website and all those kinds of things, but um, we can't control everyone's behavior. And you'll see how the vegetation on the outside starts to grow up and it shapes the nest. And um, you really, other than um, if you were to take the nesting structure away, you wouldn't know that that nest was there. It's pretty, pretty obscure. So we are looking for, here's, here's the challenge. And Donna, we typically get our project budgets beginning of the year. Here we are, 2016. And we also, as an organization, we are supported by Durham Region, so your tax dollars are hard at work at our organization. But for special projects, we have to go to outside funders. So we have done that over the course of September to December, put out a lot of funding proposals for our projects, and this is when we start to hear back from them. And for the majority of projects, we look for materials costs, our operation costs are covered by the region, and then we look to community volunteers like your organization to help us implement those projects. So we have a proposal in right now for 10 structures to be made. Not sure whether we'll get that funding, but we'll, we'll see. And those are going into Oshawa Second Marsh because the um, restoration work that was done there probably 10 years ago requires to us to do us, the city, I should say, the city has to do a down, down draw of that marsh. So draw the water levels down so we can reestablish the vegetation. And we know that the turtles will be challenged to find their nesting sites as that activity is going on. So one of our ways of mitigating the impacts we may cause to turtles because of that um, change in, in the water regime of that particular marsh, we've committed to putting some turtle nesting structures out for those turtles in that particular wetland. So that's one project. Do you want to talk about that project now or go on? Yep. How, how, do, you, like, how do you know where to put these frames? Um, and then how long are they going to be in place? So we literally walk those sites, or volunteers in the community walk those sites, and I, I know just by temperatures when the turtles are likely to start nesting. So we send a notice out to volunteers or we do a news release and our staff are out in the field doing their monitoring. So often they're carrying these in the backs of their pickup trucks. So, so we're constantly looking and we're obviously only targeting conservation areas or public lands where you have that access. And we have in the past uh, worked with private landowners because there's lots of landowners, especially in the Oak Ridges Marine, that have wetlands and ponds and a good turtle population. So, um, so, so we're out there on the landscape looking for that nesting activity, and it's generally over the course of two weeks, and then it's done. So, will the turtle let you just put them on top of it? 
Sorry? Or, or the turtle has left the nesting site and then... So when she's left, okay. the nesting structure goes on, and as I said, within 48 hours, you can move it, as long as you identify where it is, and, and if you went back to that site, you so know. How long before the days have? So 16 weeks, gestation. So it's usually, you know, if it happens on June 16th, probably September 16th, it's, it's pretty... Um, pretty close, it's, the due dates are, are pretty good at, at um, being identified. And and as I said, in some cases, the structure has been left on, we haven't gotten there, and the turtles have found their way around. Some turtles will actually hatch in the nest and then stay in for the winter, and they'll emerge in the spring. So we've learned that as well, thinking, well, what's going on? We put a structure here, we know there's a nest, and not seeing that activity until the following spring. And, and again, that's our real message as a conservation authority. We're a small group. We've got a lot of to-dos on our list. And the more we engage the public in these kinds of activities and, and give them the tools to become stewards, the, the healthier our environment is going to be. That's sort of our message. Yep, that. Well, since you've been doing this, has there been an increase or decrease in the... Too short a time frame. When you think about a female, um, takes her 40 years to get to a reproductive state and and her goal in her life is to replace herself and her mate and her lifespan is 80 years it's probably <coughs> going to take us a hundred years not and really not our lifetime but a longer time frame to know whether we're making a difference um, I think by doing a project like this you raise awareness and we are learning something that we can move the knowledge forward, but whether it's going to change populations, real challenging to, to answer. I think I read in the paper last year around Rouge Valley somewhere there's a small hidden lake that isn't very well known and they released a lot of turtles into this small lake. I don't know if you're aware of that. Hmm. It could be with the Toronto Zoo because they're right in the Rouge Park watershed and they've done a tremendous amount of work. A lot of what we're doing is borrowed from the research that their biologists have done. So it's quite possible in that situation that they've collected eggs, they would have to get a permit to do that, incubate them, and then release them, which is another technique of, of assisting those populations in survival. They said, little it, more. said it was good because there's very little access to so, so it's a hidden, yeah. yeah, that's the way it should, the, when you think of most um, wetlands in areas where there's a lot of public use and, and development or activity, yeah, it's, it's disturbing, but yeah, the more isolated, the better for the animals. We often talk in our office about just fencing off some of our property just because they are so unique and so sensitive and the human impact is huge. So. so do you have funding on this yet? Don't know. We'll be in touch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I don't think that's a big... It's not a big project. project. No, what it would be fun to do, though. I think it's a fun... Yeah, you could probably do it in an evening. We would provide the materials, <coughs> and, and any advice you would provide us on improving the construction of those units. And um, I don't want to make them so nice that people take them home for coffee tables. So I, I see what you guys do. Um, next one, Stream of Dreams. So this is a program that we just did one pilot project with uh, Sunset Heights Public School in Oshawa. And it's really to send a message to kids and all grades. So when we go to a school, we, we go from kindergarten to grade eight and we do a lesson on how our communities are connected to our streams. So we talk about storm drains on the roads, when it rains, when it snows, where does that water go, what is it taking with it, and where does it end up? And the message is those storm drains are connected to our creeks, that's where our fish and aquatic wildlife habitat is, and that creek ends up in Lake Ontario where we get our drinking water. So a lot of the focus of this program is to help kids teachers, um, parents, start to make those connections. So after their little session on the environment, and I'll tell you, those kids are smart. 
they know far more um, <laughs> than we do sometimes and are very engaging. They, they have some wonderful stories and experiences to share. So I always talk about us as being educators, but I think often we're, we're the students who are being taught. So kind of a nice relationship. So this is an example of one of the Stream of Dreams fish. And once they've had their little chat with our it's a slide presentation, much like this, they will get a fish. They get to pick whatever species they want. We typically um, paint the back blue because that's going to be. Um, yep. It's put on that, uh, lay it on that little piece, right? Right there. No, on the wooden. Oh, the, the, that's oh, That's great. There we go. I got nice. there. Nice. I need some training before I do this. Yeah, that's fine. There she is. Actually, I think it's a Sunfish? That's a feet. Sure. Yeah, that's good. Sure. Sure. Blue sunfish. Um, so, <laughs> once they have their fish in hand, they're to make a dream fish. And based on the conversation they have with our educator on the environment, um, they make a wish for this fish to communicate how we can have a healthier environment. Um, Obviously, helping them understand that if you have good, clean water and air to breathe, that you'll be a healthy individual, and that's, that's our goal. That's our ultimate 